Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in our series about pediatric respiratory conditions. The first thing we're going to cover in our video series is a little bit of a basic review of the anatomy and physiology as well as your physical exam. Remember the basics. Anytime you get a respiratory question, you always want to start with your airway, breathing, and circulation. And don't forget to consider oxygen. Remembering what the thoracic cavity looks like is important to understanding the physiology of respiration and ventilation, but also understanding the pathophysiology of a lot of the conditions that we're going to talk about. When we talk about respiratory conditions in pediatrics, we divide these conditions up by whether they happen in the upper respiratory tract or the lower respiratory tract. In this illustration, you can see a view of the lower respiratory tract from the bottom of the trachea to where it splits into the main stem bronchi to the bronchioles, which is where bronchiolitis happens, all the way down to the alveoli. Remember to keep ventilation and respiration separate in your minds. Ventilation is the actual physical movement of breathing, whereas respiration is the exchange of gases. Inspiration is an active process. The muscles have to contract in younger kids, specifically the diaphragm, which creates negative pressure, sucking air into the lungs. This is different than expiration, which is a passive process. Different conditions will affect either inspiration or expiration differently. During our growth and development video series, we talked about anatomic airway differences already. This is just an example of the anatomic airway differences at different ages. On the right, you can see the infant's airway. On the left, you can see the older child's airway and the many differences. This is involved in how we take care of them. We all know what breath sounds are, but keep in mind that breath sounds are just produced by air movement through the respiratory system. Don't fall into the trap of associating specific breath sounds, such as wheezing, with only one physiologic condition, such as asthma. A good example of this is the concept of turbulence. As you can see on the bottom right again, Turbulence applies to breath sounds as your turbulent flow going past an area of obstruction, whether it be constriction or mucus, will produce adventitious air sounds. However, we can also use this in different ways, such as providing heliox, which gives us more laminar flow, which you can see here in the tube above the turbulent one, or even in high frequency jet ventilation something that you'll see in the neonatal ICU, where air is shot very quickly into the lungs and through circulating around the airways, provides much better ventilation. But turbulence also applies in other body systems as well. Turbulent flow causes murmurs. In addition, just like the jet ventilator in the upper right-hand corner, when you pulse while you're flushing your peripheral IV, this also gives you the ability to flush the IV better while using less saline. Physical examination. You always want to know the child's general appearance. Look at their respiratory effort. Can you see any nasal flaring? Do they look like they have a prolonged expiratory phase that might clue you in to an obstructive process going on? Do they look comfortable? Are they in a normal skin color. And remember, you always want to listen first, specifically in younger children who, when they start crying, this might change your physical examination quite significantly. Everyone knows what adventitious breath sounds are, and here are some examples. But also, keep in mind that breath sounds are not the only thing you should be doing as part of your respiratory assessment. 
You want to know their respiratory rate. You want to know how deep are they breathing. And most importantly, almost, you want to know what their respiratory effort is. Do they look like they're struggling? Do they have retractions? And where are these retractions? Here's some example of locations of tractions that you can commonly see in pediatrics. In upper respiratory problems, such as croup, you may see retractions in the upper regions, such as suprasternal or clavicular. In bronchiolitis or pneumonia, you may see some retractions in the lower areas, such as intercostal, substernal, or subcostal. In severe respiratory distress, you might see all of these. Keep an eye out for labored breathing. And keep in mind that children cannot sustain this effort for very long. We're also going to be looking for evidence of infection. Along with that respiratory rate, the breath sounds, and the work of breathing, we want to know, do they have discharge from their mucous membranes? Are their lymph nodes enlarged? Do they have a fever? These are all clues for the presence of infection. And when a child has a cough, we want to know a lot more than just the fact that they have a cough. We want to know, what does it sound like? When are they coughing? How frequently are they coughing? When do they start coughing? A good example of this is, asthmatics who usually just cough at night or with physical activity. We want to know is it a dry or a wet cough and we want to know if they're coughing anything up. We take wheezing very seriously in pediatrics for the reason that wheezing is not only associated with asthma. Younger children can inhale foreign bodies that can cause wheezing. Bronchiolitis can cause wheezing and there are many other conditions, such as cardiac conditions or even oncological conditions that can cause wheezing in children. Cyanosis is a very late sign of a respiratory problem in a child, and it should be taken very seriously. We want to know, is it peripheral or central? How bad is the cyanosis and how long has it been there? If it's associated with activity, that's telling us there may also be something wrong with their cardiac output. Now let's talk a little bit about diagnostics. Common diagnostics include arterial blood gases, chest x-rays, CT scans, pulmonary function tests, our favorite pulse oximeter, or even sputum tests. Thank you, and please continue on to the next video in the series.